Welcome to The Advocate, where thought-provoking topics are discussed with no holds barred. Here on Plus TV Africa, we basically, we basically call a spade by its name. The issues of child brutality are what I'll be focusing on today. There are better ways to train a child. Juliet advocates for the need for professional workers to have a side hustle. Anne speaks on single parenthood. Felix talks about the need for women inclusion in all aspects and Victor talks about the expectations for the new year. Sit back, and after this break, we'll be here to dissect it all. Please stay with us. Spoil the rod, spare the child. Yes, you heard that right. Spoil the rod, spare the child. I just came back from a three-hour interstate drive from a relative secondary school, where my close relative was hit by the school bus driver. I know, the nerve, right? a non-academic staff of a secondary school had the temerity to hit a student. But this is not an isolated incident. You know, further proof revealed that a student in the same school was flogged 24 strokes of the cane for touching another student inappropriately. Now, am I in support of inappropriate physical contact? Of course not. But also, is the punishment for such behavior physical abuse? The answer is a further resounding no. I traveled that long distance to pass a simple message to the management of the school, a forward message, very simple, yet very strong. Stop beating people's children. It is rather unfortunate that this conversation even has to be had in the year 2021. What was even more heart-wrenching was the information gotten that the children around the, you know, the incident, they laughed and chuckled when this dastardly behavior took place which goes to reveal, sadly, that not only had the staff crossed his boundaries, but the children had been indoctrinated to believe that it was okay for a child to be physically abused in their presence. So instead of reporting it, they laughed. The rot reeks to high heavens. Did you have a student who lost his life recently due to physical abuse by other students? At what point do we actually draw the line? At what point is it okay? for students to report physical abuse. But the children are not really the problem. You know, the problem didn't even start from the school. Physical abuse is a social, spiritual, mental, and a global threat. A pandemic that must be stopped in its tracks immediately. More often than not, the origin of physical abu abuse can be traced to the home, where some parents turn their children into punching bags and toys of prey. Their homes with different weapons of choice, brandished by parents, to meet out discipline on their erring words at the slightest provocation. More often than not, when you physically abuse your children, you're unconsciously telling them it's okay to be hit by someone who is angry with them. And I speak as a parent. I know firsthand what it feels like to want to punish our children for bad behavior. I personally believe the rod of instruction achieves better results than the physical rod of destruction. Child psychology is actually posit that when you beat your children, you not only cause them bodily harm, there is also a psychological and mental trauma that is attached. It is even more endemic in Africa, where being beaten by our parents is more or less, you know, bragging rights. You know, the one whose parents had the best beating skills was the most disciplined and no-nonsense no parents. Many of us even trade banter on our, you know, our growing up beating experiences. You know, the question is, where did that actually, all that beating, where did it actually leave us? Physical abuse is a social pandemic. It must be addressed by governments and societies everywhere. Physical abuse is a spiritual pandemic. Religious bodies and leaders must address it immediately. Physical abuse is a mental pandemic. It must be dealt with by everyone who has a functioning brain. Stop beating people's children. Whether they're your children, whether they're your staff, your spouses, your students, your wards, or anyone at all. Just stop it. I totally agree with you. We should actually stop doing it, especially to other people's children. And I think it's coming from our own upbringing, where some of us were yeah, abused as children. to Morales. obedience. <laughs> beaten to obedience. But what we had then was we knew obedience. You could say it was submission, because we were fear. afraid, fear. Absolutely. So we had this in our mind, we were rebelling in our spirit. Mm. But because we'll lose inheritance, we'll be disowned, we'll starve and die. <laughs> we complied. But that thing wasn't obedience. Yeah. So we have to, there are other ways to get children to comply, to obey. I mean, there's the retriever system where you take something that is important and there's the naughty corner for very young children. Yeah. 
and you can even do the positive side whereby you come up and say you reward them for good behavior. So they can now see what it is like to do the right thing. But, but whatever you do, you should not force a child to obey you. You end their respect Absolutely. and their ways to do this. I mean, that's my own take. What do you think, Felix? Well, Victor, you know, when he was saying this, I was just reminiscing about these in the secondary school. Yeah. We both went to military school at some Whoa. point. I did. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I did. Corporal punishment. Right. Subjected that's to corporal right. punishment. <laughs> you ran right away. Right. But I stayed anyway. <laughs> and actually, they subjected us to some level of corporal punishment. I remember when I crawled for coming school leads. From when we came down from the bus, I crawled on the third route to into the school. The soldier, soldiers were shouting about, come on, move, move. And to us, it was normal. But over time, I, I think I agree with your ideology. It's not wrong to punish children, but the punishment should not be, should not cause their emotional and physical harm. Not the other traumatic. ways you can punish a child yeah. so that the child can have some level of recourse to think, okay, I reflect what I did was wrong and I need to apologize for my wrongdoing. On the other hand, too, most African parents, most Nigerian parents, they don't um, applaud their children when they do good. Yeah, you you only hear them interacting with their children with when they do something wrong. And yeah. the interaction is, they wouldn't even want to listen to what the child has to say. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes you child. have to listen to the child. Yeah. He may have done something wrong, but look at the intent. What was the intent behind what he did? If he did something wrong, but he had a good intention, maybe you need to just extribute the child. Be patient with your children. Yeah. And then when they do something good, when he or she does something good, applaud them. Reward, him. yeah. I so agree. I think I agree with your sentiment. Absolutely. I mean, I call it the, the thinking corner in my home. It's called the thinking. I don't call it a naughty corner. You know, because only in that corner you feel like, oh, I've been naughty. I call it the thinking corner. And the reason is simple. Every child has the ability to think, to process information. So when they've done something wrong, I explain it to them. Then I say, go to the corner and think about it. So it's a thinking corner. So when you get that, because again, you know, language, communication is very important with this child. They pick up things very fast. They do. So when you explain in detail what it is, and you say, go to the corner and think about it, then come back and let's have a conversation. I find this works for me, you know, and I feel like conversations, dialogue, would actually work better than, you know, physical, you know, just being physical all the time. Exactly. You know. Uh, and shortly yeah. before Victor will respond to that, because mm -hmm. I know you want to say something. This also transcends beyond parents-children relationship. If you look at government enforcement agency yeah. as a citizen, yeah. somebody is doing something wrong on the road and a soldier or a policeman will come. Rather than cautioning him using the appropriate level of force that is allowed within the ambit of the law, mm -hmm. you see them coming. With so, sticks, with kobo. Are they, they go good? Home attacking, they it's come wrong. Attacking. Yeah, absolutely. It's wrong. Uh, yeah. You don't challenge. I remember when I was in secondary school, I had the opportunity of challenging a soldier because then I was in secondary school and I went to a military school. We went outside, he, they were, I, I felt they were harassing drivers on the road. And then I said something, why are these soldiers doing this thing? The man standing beside me was a soldier. He didn't listen to me. He hit me. I now said, it's because I was a student, they would let me go. And I looked at him and said, they can actually allow these people. He was like, you won't understand. But he actually hit me for saying that. I just let it go. But you see, this is wrong. We don't, if you want to correct somebody, you don't have to um, cause bodily harm to that person. You can actually correct the person and maintain your discipline as a soldier without causing bodily harm. So, Victor, you want to ship in something? Yeah, you know, all we know is all we've learned. And all we've learned is not all there is to know, right? So, I come from a business angle, right? So, if I want to get Juliet's money, I just need to know what to sell to Juliet to get out the money, right? So, and if you think about it, so if I don't know how to get to sell something to Juliet, I would use a weapon to get money out of Juliet. So either ways, we're all sort of like taking money from people. Now, some are doing it legally by selling a solution. Intellect, intelligently. Intelligently. Now, some are doing it by willpower. So I don't have what to sell. I don't have anything to but sell. But I want what this but person I want. has. So either way, Juliet is paying money to different sets of people. So if you bring it back to, you know, the issue that we have here, right? I, so it's what pe people will not do beyond what they know. It's what we were introduced to. It's what we grew up knowing, right? So as much as you say, oh, don't do that. It's hurting your child. Just like telling someone that is, that is drinking, do not drink. It's hurting your lungs. I mean, the federal minister of it once as much as I like to die young, right? They see that on the sick, but they see smoke. So they can't hear that. Their ears can hear, but their mind cannot hear it. So let's go back to the basic, which is how do we begin to re-engineer a new thinking system whereby people begin to see, you know, um, different other methods of correction. You know, there's things yeah. that we did in psychology around 
positive reinforcement somebody does well i reward my child Absolutely. you know they don't they do badly i take away the yeah. reward oh, you're not going to yeah. play ps2 Absolutely. you're not going to play game yeah. that's punishment yes. yeah that's yeah. what right. i mean, start with someone actually making them i mean for instance when i was going to drive here today my wife was like you're going to go out there i said yes because it starts with somebody saying this is wrong there was a time when owning, owning slaves was, was okay. Mm -hmm. It was actually legal. It was then it was a capital like, punishment yeah, was okay, was okay. beheading people. You know, by the way, <laughs> Anne, um, Anne, I'm sure you have something to say. <laughs> she's still there. Oh, yes, yes she's uh, right there. I grew up without being beaten. Personally, I can count the amount of times I was beaten by my parents, both of them. And I like to think I turned out quite all right without the beating. Mm. <laughs> but... Um, in Kenya today, we have a lot of high school students burning down schools. So schools are getting closed. And now they are going back to the conversation of it's because parents are not beating their children. So I think this is a very sensitive topic. Mm -hmm. um, in Kenya today, they're saying we have stopped beating our children and that's why they are burning down schools and that's why they're not being as respectful as they should. So this is definitely a very, very sensitive topic to be discussing, but uh, I personally don't beat my daughter. I like to think that I can actually talk to her and she actually understands. Mm. But most of the parents are going to want to be their children because that's how they think they have power over their children. So this is a very sensitive topic and thank you for bringing it up. We don't have to raise kids by beating them for us to feel listened to or for us to feel like we're instilling discipline in our kids yeah thank you very much Anne. and the truth is we can actually can't exhaust so we had said that we're going to have a whole episode to talk about this and you know and, and just to speak with Anne to what Anne said sometimes just the impatience a child, i mean a parent just feels if i strike i can get quicker resort than, than yeah. sitting down and having a conversation dialogue but thank you very much and thanks everyone um up next is Anne. Please stay with us.